So two new factoring patterns. Factoring by grouping. It is a scientific fact that 99% of human beings can remember three numbers. That's why your locker combination is made of three numbers. That's why your social security number comes in three parts. That's why phone numbers come in three parts. As soon as we take it to a fourth number, you lose almost everybody. People have much more difficulty remembering four in a row than they do with three. So that's the reason they work the way that they do. So what we're going to do is we're going to trick our brain because we're going to see that factoring by grouping has four terms. And that's where our brain says, sorry, out to lunch. I can't look at all four of those and figure out what it is it's supposed to be factored out of there. Three, I'm okay with. You multiply to get the last term, you add them together to get the middle term. But you throw a fourth in, we're toast. So we're going to trick our brain. We're going to split it into two groups of two. So our brain will say, oh, that I can do. I can do two here and two here. That's no big deal. And then factor out the greatest common factor in each of those terms. So we're trying to see, did we notice the exact same factor was there? And then we're going to use what's left to make sure that we could get back to the original that we just factored. And then it says the GCFs form one factor, the common what's left is for the second factor. Yeah, all of that stuff is best if I just show you one. You'll see what on earth it is we're trying to do. So example one, here's what we do. We look at it and we say, three, two, one, zero. Oh, I can't put any of those together. My brain doesn't like four. All right, so here's how I'm going to trick it. I'm going to group the first two together and the last two together and see if I can get my brain to see there really is something that will divide out of all four of those terms. So I look at just 8x cubed minus 20x squared and I try to factor it. And I realize... Well, I can take a 4 out of that, and I can take an x squared out of that. So I'm going to take 4x squared out of those first two terms and see what's left. Well, 4x squared times something gives you 8x cubed, and that something is 2x. And then 4x squared times something gives us negative 20x squared. Well, that's minus 5. Now, I'm not done. And my brain still can't see what on earth is going on until I factor the second group. So I look at my 6x minus 15 and I think, well, I can pull a 2 out of that. Uh, I, I, sorry, a 3. I think it had to be a mistake. Pull a 3 out of that. And if I do that, 3 times something is 6x, and that something is 2x. 3 times something is negative 15, and that something is negative 5. Oh, the light bulb comes on. My brain can now see 2x minus 5 was really in both of those parts. So I can see that that's a factor. Now it's not there twice. Remember we had to pull a trick on our brain to get it to see that it's in both of those pieces. It's just there once. So it's like we're going to take this 2x minus 5 and we're going to factor it out into the front. And then we have but what's left, which is the 4x squared and the plus 3, in the other set of parentheses. Because this always has to work forward and backwards. That's math. So if we can factor this and get this, we should be able to do FOIL on this and get back to the original. That way we can kind of check our answer and make sure it's in the one. So, major trick on the brain. Over here, this looks pretty scary. There's all kinds of variables going on here. But if I remember four terms that I can't put together and I group them, I think, well, there's an A in both of those first terms. I'll just pull an A out of that. And it'll be X plus Y. And then these back two, well, I definitely see a B in both of those and I can pull that out. And then it's, oh, good, I tricked my brain. X plus Y was really there the whole time. I couldn't see it because there were four terms. But the piece that's going to give me that is this A plus B, the leftovers. You know, what did we use to see that to make sure it was going to work? So let's go down to example two. Can we put 
any of those together? Are any of those like terms? All right, so then when we see four terms, we should say, you know what, I'm going to have to group this. My brain can't see, the fact that it's there. So 5m cubed minus 10m squared. What could we take out of both of those? And I heard some people say the 5, and I heard some people say the m squared. So together we've got all of that. So what would be left? Because 5m squared times m is 5m cubed. 5m squared times negative 2 is negative 10m squared. What could you take out of 8m minus 16? All right, let's take an 8. If you do that, if you factor the 8 out, what's inside the parentheses? We can see it. Originally, when we saw this thing, there's no way anybody said, oh, yes, m minus 2 divides that nicely. Well, we, just, we can't do that. You know, if you, usually some people that they'll call like mathematicians that can do that. But for most people, we have to see that it's in both parts for us to say, yep, it really was a factor. And I had to trick my brain into saying that. And then, what did we use to make that happen? We sure did. So there it is. And it doesn't matter. Some people like to put the 5m squared plus 8 in front of the m minus 2. But they need to take that out. So if I were you, I would be saying, okay, zero. So what happens if we do all this and these parentheses don't match? Then you can't factor the root. Then you have to use different methods. But today's about factoring the root, so most of them should be. All right, let's take a look at this one. Can For example, 3, what we'll do is, again, try to see if we could combine any like terms. We can't. But the first thing we should do after that is see whether or not we have a greatest common monomial factor. So we notice there's not an n in all of these, so we won't be able to take a variable out. But with 6, 24, 21, and 84, hopefully we can find a number that will divide out of all of those evenly. So 6 won't go into 21, but 3 goes into 6, it goes into 24, it goes into 21, and 3 does go into 84. So this will be 3 times 2n cubed plus 8n squared plus 7n, and 84 divided by 3 is 28. Now, we have the common monomial factor taken out. The next thing to do is notice we still have eight ter four terms, and so what we want to do is factor by grouping. And taking a look at 2n cubed plus 8n squared, we could take a 2 and an n squared out of both of those terms, and that would leave us with n plus 4. And in the back, we could factor out a 7, and that would leave us with n plus 4. So now, again, we see that we have tricked our brain into noticing, hey, n plus 4 was really there all along. We just couldn't see it. Now, the 3 has to stay in the front, because remember, the process is afterwards. But we're going to need that n plus 4 as one factor, because remember, this step right here was just for us to see, hey, n plus 4 really is a factor. And then the leftovers go in the other set of parentheses, and the last thing to do would be to check and see, does anything here still have a squared? And if it does, is it factorable? The only one that has a squared is the 2n squared plus 7. But there isn't any way for us to factor that. So this is done. So what made this problem unique was that it had a greatest common factor that we could take out first, and then we could factor by grouping. It's a lot of gum. First thing I look at is, can I put any of these together? Well, this is a wx. No more wx's. xz squared. No more xz squared. wy. Nope. Nope. They're all different. So we have to try, since it has four terms, factoring by grouping. 6wx minus 14xz squared. What do we take them? 2x. Minus 7. That's a lot of stuff. Well, let's 
see if we get the same stuff in the back. What could you pull out of 15WY minus 35YZ squared? What's left? That sounds familiar. There it is. We see it. Same set of parentheses. Now, I do want to warn you, every once in a while, these both have negatives, and you'll have to pull a negative out of both of them. So make sure your parentheses have exactly the same thing in them. If they don't, then we can't factor it by grouping. And again, it doesn't matter if you put the 3w minus 7z squared first or second. So 43210 means the objective so far is just factoring by grouping. Do you get the feeling that you've maybe seen this before? Kind of getting that little feeling in your head? That this. So you don't think you did this in exponential? Some teachers have to some teachers have to skip because they don't have time. Any of you have the feeling that you've seen factory maybe before? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Now, another new factory. We look at it and we don't see squares, but what we do see is perfect cubes. So a cubed plus b cubed, a cubed minus b cubed. That's going to grab our attention. Two reasons. First of all, we're not as comfortable with cubes as we probably should be. So let's say that somebody looks at 64 and they don't know if it's a perfect cube. Remember, on your calculator, because we talked about this when we were doing powers before, Underneath the math button for number four, right there, that's cube group. So if you don't know whether or not 64 is a perfect cube, you can always do that and you get the four. Now, I don't think they gave you huge numbers for this today because I wanted you to feel pretty comfortable. Oh, uh, there's a couple of them here you might not like. So let me stop. And we're going to say, well, this is really weird because this is cubic stuff. We haven't done cubic stuff. And this is a formula that most people do just memorize. Now, I try not to memorize. So what I do is use lot. And I look at a cubed plus b cubed, and I think, well, somewhere in that thing, you must be able to pull out an a plus b. I mean, there's three of them, for goodness sake. There's got to be one a plus b in as a factor. And then I think, OK, now working backwards, how would I get that to be a cubed plus b cubed? Well, if this is just an a, this is going to have to be a squared. And if this is just a b, this is going to have to be b squared. It's the only way it's going to work. And then I think, if it doesn't have a middle term, I'm going to have to use the opposite sign for that middle term. Otherwise, everything is going to have lots and lots of terms. So that means I'm going to have to, since this is plus, use subtraction of the two of those multiplied together. So again, some people just memorize it. I try to think logically about what's going to happen. This one says a cubed minus b cubed. Okay? If there's three of them, there's got to be at least one factor that's just a minus b. So thinking backwards, a times something has to give me a cubed. That's a squared. b times something has to give me b cubed. That's b squared. And the middle term has to drop out. So if this is a minus, the middle term has to be a plus. And it'll look like that. So if you can, use logic instead of memorizing. That's just always the best thing to do in math is to think logically about it. So this shows us why it works. I'm not going to bother you with that. That's a lot of algebra with variables. We're just going to get into practicing this. So we've got factor, for example, 5, x cubed plus 125. Well, I can only do that if 125 is a perfect cube. Is 125 a perfect cube? What is it? Cube. 5. So this is x cubed, and this is 5 cubed. And I remember, oh, this is the one where I need the formula. Okay. So this is plus a cubed plus b cubed, that means there's going to be an a plus b in there somewhere. Now, 
What do I multiply a by to get a to the third? a squared. What do I multiply b by to get b to the third? b squared. But my middle term has to have the opposite sign, otherwise I'll have middle terms and I don't want that. So this will be minus b plus b squared. Now why do I use that? Because I need a formula to put b's into, and I just found the formula. There it is. So a is really x, and b is really pi. And we're going to put them in the formula and simplify as we go. So this is just going to be x plus 5. Then we have to take x and square it. Then we have to subtract x times 5, which is 5x. And then we have to square b. It was 5, so that's going to give me 25. Might be a question in reality for a little bit. Okay. Now, the question always comes up. Is that one still factorable? Because we're supposed to factor as long as we can. Well, you can try it. You can think for a second. Two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to negative. I'm going to tell you 98.5% of the time, we're done. We can't factor at this point. These are usually not factorable. Now, I say that, and there's always an exception. So every once in a while, one of those quadratics will be factorable. But it's once in a great while. So just stop and ask yourself, are there two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to negative 5? Nope. Not going to work. I'm done. It's factored. Let's go to the next one. 8m cubed plus 343. Well, the first thing I would want to do is divide both of those by 8. 343 divide nicely by 8? No. All right. Um, well, how about we try another number that divides 8 nicely? 4. Is 343 divided by 4? Can we at least make this smaller? No. How about 343 divided by 2? Well, we already know. So we're stuck with 8 and 343, and we should realize, well, 8's not so bad. Then what do you do with 8? What do you cube to get 8? 2. 2 times 2 times 2. So this is 2m cubed. And we have a calculator, so if we don't know 343 as a perfect cube, we can do math. Number 4, 343, and the calculator will gladly tell us that that is 7. And then it's back to logic, where you say, all right, if this is a cubed plus b cubed, there has to be an a plus b somewhere in all of it. <coughs> and if I'm working backwards and I need to get a to the third, I'm going to need two more a's and two more b's, and I'm going to have to make sure that my middle term is the opposite of what I have in the first parentheses, so it's going to be minus a cubed. And then we substitute. A is 2m, and b is 7. Numbers are getting a little bigger, so we want to make sure we're careful about this. What's going to go in the first set of parentheses? 2m plus 7. And now here's where we have to be really, really careful. What is 2m, the quantity, Squared. 2m times 2m is 4m squared. See, everybody always wants to put a 2 right there. 4m squared minus, what's our middle term going to be? 14m plus, last term, 49. And I do want to remind you, because that one, you can't just say, hey, two numbers that multiply to 49 and add to negative 14, because there's a term in front. Remember, you can always do the discriminant, and if the discriminant turns out to be a perfect square, then you know it's factorable. So, we do a little b squared minus 4ac on our calculator and see whether or not we get a perfect square. So that will be negative 14 squared minus parentheses. 4 times 4 times 49. And it's negative, so it's definitely not a perfect square. So this one is going to be our parentheses on the 
are the capacitor joint. Oh, next one looks smaller. Well, that's kind of nice. All right. Um, so n cubed minus 216, is that for the cube? This is n cubed. What do you think you get 216? Six? Yeah, and again, if you didn't know it, you get math number four, 216. There it is, it's six. But now my formula is going to be slightly different this time because if this is n cubed minus something, that means I have to have a minus b in the first set of parentheses. And then I've got my a squared in the front and my b squared in the back to make sure that I'm going to get a cubed plus b cubed. So I have to use the opposite sign in the middle, which would be a plus in b. So that's the only difference between the formula. It's the location of the plus and the minus. Plus you. So first set of parentheses would have what? N minus 6. First term for the second set? N squared. Plus 6N plus, there it is. And this one you could check just by hand and say two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to 6. That's what I meant. And that's this one. Ooh. 27X cubed minus 64. Is there anything we could take out of both a 27 and a 64 to make it smaller? Might not want to, right? Because what do you know is cubed to get 27? 3. What do you cube to get 64? So maybe we don't want to find anything anyway. X cubed, 4 cubed. Should I put subtraction in the first set of parentheses or the second set? First, right there. heads are down and you were doing these last three before I even wrote the formulas down. Um, you, I already know about you guys that you are great visual people with the graphs, but you also seem to be really great formula people and that's going to help you out a lot with this. So, a little practice. Here's what I need you to do though. Don't follow the directions the book has because they're going to say factor and solve. We didn't do the solve. So for 11 through 19, just factor those and then stop. And then go to a couple of review problems in 61 to 67 there. So I know it's hard because you want to read the instructions in the book and do it this way, but all we've done so far is factor. So just factor 11 through 19. I'll try to do those all the way through. 